right, so the new unit that we're gonna do is something you've really never seen before, ever. And it deals with permutations and combinations is what it's called. Okay, so first thing is we're gonna write down the formulas from our formula sheet in here. We're gonna write them down and I don't expect you to know anything about what we're actually writing and that's okay right now. So on your formula sheet, you have that with you. We're now gonna be in this section of your formula sheet. Okay, so everybody found this part of their formula sheet. So the P is the permutation formula and the C is the combination formula. Okay, so the formulas from your formula sheet. Okay, next question. Does the order matter? So with a combination, it doesn't. And with a permutation, the order does. So what's an example of doing something where you're just making a combination of something and then the order doesn't matter? Matter, Pizza. If you order a pizza, you probably are like, hi, can I get a ham and pineapple? You're not probably gonna say, can you please put the ham on and then the pineapple or can you put the pineapple on and then the ham? The order of that doesn't matter. You just are caring that you have those two items on your pizza. Um, combination. If I'm coaching baseball, I'm just trying to think of what nine people to put on without ordering them around. I'm just going to say you nine are going to start. Or making a committee. If you just need a committee of people, but you don't need to give them positions. versus a permutation making like a batting lineup. Does the order matter? Yeah, I care who's my lead off. I care who's my cleanup. I'm putting them in a specific order and if I change that around, it changes my batting lineup. That's a different order. Okay, so permutation combination. Those are the big ideas where the order doesn't matter and the order does. Okay, this exclamation mark, you've already seen it a few times. So what does it mean? The word for it is called factorial. And what does a factorial do in math? It expands it. So if I start at four, this is gonna be four times three times two times one. You always stop at one. <coughs> so in your head, what is that number? 24. Okay, so now we're gonna find, where's that button? So mine is right here where I have to push second function exclamation and then push equals and we should get 24. Okay, so everybody has found their button, figured that out. So if I do seven factorial, which would really mean in math, what is seven times six times five times four times three times two times one? But I'm not gonna do that because we have a calculator button that does it. So can you get me that using your calculator fancy button? Okay, right, anybody have an answer? I actually didn't do it. 5,040. Okay, so that's a factorial. 
Now, another thing we need to know is when we use these NPR, you, so you saw that on your formula sheet, NPR. Well, what is the N and what is the R? The N is the total number, and the R would be the number you would select, or, okay? So an example, something like 5P3. I have five items, and I'm going to be using three items, okay? What do you know about the relationship then with N and R? R can't be bigger, if that makes sense. You can't have five items and then select eight out of that. That doesn't make sense. So R can't be bigger. Okay, so let's look at two examples and talk about why they're different. So a combination versus a permutation. So let's pretend I have five items and instead of this example, which is books, I have five writing utensils here, okay? Um, I want to know how many combinations I could have. So give me an example of me being able to select two markers. Give me one example. Okay, I'll start. I could pick up pink and blue together. So that was one of my options. Okay, can you think of how I could do that elsewise? I could pick up like pink and black marker. I could do yellow and green. Okay, how many different options would I have? Does it make sense that I could do 10 different ways there? So pretend these were the colors, I could do the first one with the second, the first with the third, and so on. Okay, so let's try using the formula. So here we are at the top, let's go up here, we use this formula. N factorial. Well, how many total objects were there? <coughs> Five. Divided by R factorial. That was next in our formula. So how many was I selecting? two, and then in this bracket you would do five subtract two factorial, which would really be a three factorial. Okay, so we could just type this into our calculator. I believe we would have to do brackets like so, five factorial divided by three factorial times, two factorial times three factorial. We should get 10 out of it, because that's what we thought. Okay, so that's how the formula would work. But we're not gonna use this formula a lot like that because we have buttons. So watch me type this in the quick way. So I'm gonna push five first, and then I'm gonna hit this combination button. So I have to go shift combo two. So five C two, I'm gonna get my calculator to do that. And we already know our answer should be 10. So I'm gonna walk around and see if you know how to type that in. Okay, so five choose two is just a type in your calculator and you should get 10. Okay, so the P is the permutation. So in this example, I was library, I was picking books. So this time there was five books, but this time I was gonna take two and then I'm gonna also be scanning them across the library scanner. So you know how Mrs. Wall goes ding, ding with the Scanner thing? Okay, so what could I do? So let's pretend I wanted to take these two books out of the library. Would it make sense now that I could go black, pink, or I could also go pink and then black? Because that's a different way to scan them, right? 
So I could go pink and then blue, but then I could also do blue and then pink. The order of this one matters. So this time I have 20 because really for every combination, I could do each combination two different ways. So let's check out the formula. So the formula says n factorial. So there was five objects and we're gonna do it over five minus two factorial. And this time I'm gonna make you do this formula a little bit different because we're gonna be doing this today. Can you expand five factorial? So it would go five, four, three, two, one, right? Can you expand three factorial? Three, two, one. What would happen with that? All of this would cancel all of that and you end up with 20. Okay, let's practice that in our calculator though. So I need you to give me a 5P2. So everybody who found their C button, your P button should be somewhere in the same area of your calculator. You should get 20. with the combination formula. So 15C2 is equal to 15C13. And let's prove why. So using the formula, here we go. 15 factorial. And then if I do the bottom, it would read 2 factorial subtract factorial. which would be 15 factorial divided by two factorial, 13 factorial. So now let's go to the other side. Using the formula, how would you expand this one? 15 factorial over 13 factorial bracket subtract factorial And what do you think about those? Would those end up being the same number? Yeah, because look at the bottom. That's the same. It's just flipped around. Okay, so if I gave you this example, what would this value be in the question mark spot? What would have to be here to make that property work? I can't even do two because I can't have two objects and then try to pick four out of that. What makes that work? Think about what I did up here. What's the relationship with those numbers? I'd have to pick a 10. Okay, do you see 2 and 13 add to 15? Okay, calculate the number of ways you can arrange three people on three chairs. Okay, so I'm going to draw my three chairs here. I'm going to put somebody on the first seat. How many people do I have to pick from? I have three people. Then, 
I'm going to put somebody on to the second seat. How many options do I have? Two. Then I'm going to put somebody on the third seat. How many options of people do I have? One. What kind of math operation is your instinct telling you that I would put between here? Would I want to multiply, divide, add, or subtract those numbers? Anybody want to guess an instinct? Was your instinct to multiply? So there's six ways you can do that. Do you understand this would technically be the same as doing a three factorial? Because it's three, two, one. This would also be the same as doing three, and we can permutate three, because we're changing, the order changes things, right? The order does matter on how we're placing these people in chairs. Calculate the number of ways you can arrange three people onto two chairs. So this time, if I have two chairs, how many people do I have to put onto my first chair? Three. And then I go to put somebody on my second chair, and now I have two options. So this one actually ends up being six as well. This is not a factorial because it doesn't go three, two, one. It's not a factorial, but it would be the same as doing a three P two. You're arranging two objects out of the three. Calculate the number of ways you can arrange eight people onto three chairs. So if you draw three chairs, how many people could you be putting onto your first chair? Eight. Then I would have seven people to pick from, and then six. Okay, this is not eight factorial because you didn't go all the way to one. That's not what this is. But you can do an eight P three. So can you try those in your calculator separately? Can you try this to see what your number is? And then can you try this to see if it does give us the same number? Try them both. So that's what permutations are really doing. Okay, simplify this factorial expression. So if you are going to try this in your calculator, for instance, 91 factorial, guess what? Calculator doesn't do it, so don't even try to cheat. Um, the reason your calculator doesn't do it is, can you imagine how big that number is? 91 times 90 times 89, right? Like That's a huge number. Your calculator can't handle it. So we're going to expand here. So if we start at a 91, what's the next number as we go down? 90 then 89 and beyond, right? I'm going to stop writing though. Do you see why I'm going to stop writing the rest? Because on the bottom, I'm basically saying from 89 and down would be gone, canceled. So my hint is to expand the bigger one. So now you can just do a 91 times a 90, and your calculator would handle that. Okay, how many outfits can you make? If you have four shoes, 10 shirts, and eight pants to pick from, so your outfit is going to consist of a shirt, a pant, and a shoe, okay? Would the order of this all matter to you? 
No. I'm not going to care about the order I'm doing this in. I'm just going to care about choosing it. So here's what I'm going to do. I have four pairs of shoes, and what do I have to do? I have to choose one of them. Then I have 10 shirts, and I would have to choose one shirt to pick. And I have eight pants, and I'm going to have to choose one pant to wear. Without running this through your calculator, anybody want to take a wild guess at what four choose one is? If you have four objects and you need to pick one of them, how many ways does that end up being? Four. Ten. Eight. Okay, order doesn't matter there. The order is not mattering to me because I'm just picking them. I'm not caring about the order I'm picking them in. Okay, next question. You're trying to make a committee of three people and you have 10 students to pick from. So there's 10 students and I have to end up with three. So I'm gonna have to now get you to think about what letter are we gonna put in there. Are you gonna put a P or a C? So ask yourself, is the order of these people in play? If you're trying to make a committee of three people, would you concern yourself with the order of them? Did you pick the right letter? Okay. Calculate. So just through their calculator, we're not going to do the formula anymore because you don't really run into that much. Okay, next question. You're making a committee. You have seven boys and five girls. How many committees of four are you going to make if there's no restrictions? Okay, so we've decided we're going to pick a C because we don't really care about the order of people on my committee. We just want these people on there. Are you going to agree with me that I want a four there because I need to choose four people? And... What am I going to put at the front? 12. Yeah, exactly. Good. Next question is, you're still doing this committee of four, but this time you have to have three boys and one girl on this committee. So I'm going to choose three boys from how many as an option, as a total? Seven. Seven. And I'm going to do choosing one girl from how many total? Five. Now I have to think about the math operation. I'm going to be doing this and this on the same committee. So what's your instinct going to say as a math? You're going to times, because it's you're doing this and this. So in math, when you hear the word and, you would be doing a multiply. So what do you think, this is not happening now, but it will happen. What do you think about the word doing this or this in math? You would, you're going to have to add.
Okay, so the next question says you have to have at least two boys on this committee. So we have to talk about this at least. So what could we do? Would you agree that I could put two boys on this committee? Would that work? Yeah, that would work. What does at least mean? I could be bigger, that's my minimum. So I could have actually put three boys on the committee as well. That could have been an option. Is there any other options that would work? You could put four boys. Would you agree with me that I could have this committee or this committee or this committee? Those are not happening at the same time. Those are separate scenarios. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add the different scenarios that could take place. Okay, so if I'm gonna put two boys on there, I'm gonna go seven, choose two, because I'm gonna have two boys on there. And I had seven to pick from. But I got to also do something else on that committee. If there's going to be two boys on those committees, what do you got to do to fill that committee up? I'm going to need to put two girls, and then that's out of the five. Three boys. Can we just copy down the question above us? Would that be OK? I already did that above, so I'm just gonna write down that number. And then what would the scenario look like if you're gonna put four boys on the committee? So seven boys, and you're gonna choose four of them. And there's five girls, and you're gonna choose none of them, okay? And technically, you don't need to write that if you don't want to, okay? As a number, it would be one. And just for time's sake, are you guys okay if I just write down these numbers? Instead of you playing around with your calculators, you got it mastered, right? Okay, the last one of this, Alec or Kristen have to be on your committee and your committee is still be consisting of three boys and one girl, but you can't put them both on this committee. They can't be on there together. They probably had a bad breakup. You don't want them to be on there. We have to keep them separate. So here's my possibilities. So scenarios. I could have a scenario where Alec is on. And don't forget, if he's on there, Kristen's not on there. Or what's the other committee possible? Kristen could have been on there. And then if she is, you got to remember that Alec would have to be off, right? Okay, so ready? If Alec is on, we're gonna go Alec, choose Alec. He's on there. Alec, choose Alec. Okay, what do I need now? So Alec is a boy, and I need to put three boys on here. So now what's my next step? I'm gonna choose two more boys. How many boys do I have left in my selection pool? There were seven boys, but that's not a seven. Why? 
Because Alec is on, he's not in my selection pool anymore. So I only have six left to pick from. So I now need to put one girl on this committee. So I'm going to choose one girl. How many would I have available to pick from? Four, because Kristen's not involved, right? Okay, so saving your time, that's a 60, all of it. Now, there's a different situation, so I'm putting an add sign, because this is another situation that's separate. So Kristen is on this one, so I'm going to go one, choose one, because Kristen is that person. Three boys. So I'm going to be choosing three boys from how many selections? Six, because I'm not looking at Alec. Okay, and then I'm not worried about the girl because I already picked the girl. Okay, I'm sorry, there's just like, with this unit, there's not small parts I can teach. It's almost like I just have to teach it all so you to understand, so. And I don't know how much I'm gonna keep going here, though. How many ways can you arrange Mississippi, the letters? Okay, so I'm just gonna show you something simple. I'm gonna use the word dad. Now, if I switch those letters around, that's what it would be. That's another switch. I rearranged. Does this look anything different to you, though? No. So if something gets repeated, would it make sense in math that we would divide, cancel it? If something gets repeated like that? So technically, I did an arrangement. This was two arrangements but there really is just one, because when you look at it, you don't know any different with letters. Okay, count. How many letters can you have there with Mississippi? The whole thing, how many are there? 11? Okay, now we're gonna mathematically cancel anything that repeated. So I can see a bunch of I's there, how many? Four. So I'm going to do four, four arrangements, get cancelled like that. Um, S's. There's four, so four factorial. And there's a P, it gets repeated. Okay, so in your calculator, if you did this, you would need to do brackets like that, right? That would be your typing in your calculator with brackets. And FYI, we should all know that 2 factorial is... What is 2 factorial? 2. two. Oh, it's just going to be two. Okay, I will just stop. Um, I have to 